water faucet, water comes out. Yeah, we take that for granted, don't you? Or I remember walking outside this morning to get my newspaper, and I go, where's my newspaper? That person's always forgetting to deliver my paper. And I'm thinking, well, today's New Year's Day. I bet you that they brought it last night. So I go in the bathroom, it's in the bathroom. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Is, is when we wake up in the morning, we have a choice to count our blessings, to start complaining at all. And then what happens when we start complaining in the morning? The rest of the day goes that way, right? Start with counting your blessings. Nine, listen before speaking. Don't try to answer questions or objections before you heard the other person out. In Proverbs 18.13 says, uh, it calls this habit a folly and a shame. Let's use our ears more and our tongues less in 2017. You know, sometimes when you go to console somebody who has lost a loved one or is having a hard time, you know, sometimes I go, and I don't say anything. I just spend time with them. And I, maybe I just don't know what to say. And later on you find out that they say something like, well, I really appreciate you being there for me. You know, what did I do? I didn't do anything. I just went there. But realize that we as Christians are bringing the very presence of God into the room when we go and visit people. And that just our presence in our ears listening to what's going on. And sometimes we need to just keep our mouth shut. And stop thinking, you know, you know, when, when people, and I, I have to catch myself doing that, try to answer the, or, or finish somebody's sentence when they're speaking. Let them speak. Don't try to finish their sentence. Maybe they're going in a different direction. And what happens? I mean, how many of you like it when somebody finishes your statements all the time? Now, what a jerk. <laughs> Number 10. Own up to being wrong. Be willing to admit when you're wrong. Spend the next several years actively looking for opportunities to admit being wrong without prompting. Now, I know none of you have ever been wrong before, right? <laughs> you know, again, it goes back to this forgiveness issue, right? How many people have wronged Jesus? But he says, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. For they know not they don't know what they're doing. So whenever you start thinking about other people wronging you, think of how many times you have wronged other people. Then I kind of put things into perspective. Be willing to look at the good in other people. You know, when we start doing that, it will change our perspective on life. So the trick to making a good Making good on any goal is to post it in a prominent place. Now, I know most of you, when you get up in the morning, you go into the bathroom and maybe you comb your hair or put makeup on, all that stuff. So that's a good place for your goals, okay? Put it in a prominent place and review it daily. Maybe even more than daily. Maybe two or three times a day until it becomes second nature, it becomes a part of you. And you will notice a difference when you are around other people. Because you know what? People are going to start liking you when you are transformed into the image of Christ. And this is mine. Be sure to share your goals with someone that will hold you accountable. And here's wishing you every success in 2017. You know what? Again, the devil wants to isolate you. 
want you not to associate with other people, especially when you're going through some struggles. But well, what you have to do is you have to find somebody that can hold you accountable how you would live your life. Something that you trust. Because we were meant for communion. We were meant for fellowship. That is God's design of our life. To have fellowship. So if you ever get to the point where you're feeling like you have to isolate yourself, it's okay every once in a while to be alone with God and isolate, but you have to get out of that and start associating with other people. Because how else are you going to know how you're doing if someone can't call you out on your junk? In 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, it says, For we know that if the earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built with human hands, Meanwhile, we groan longing to be clothed instead of our, uh, instead with our heavenly dwelling. And because we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan in our burden because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. And now, one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God who has given us the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Now, when you take your money to the bank and you put it in there, you want to make sure that it's going to be in there the next time you check. How many of you ever had an experience where you deposited some money in your bank account and you went to the bank and there, the money wasn't there? Maybe they put it in somebody else's account. Maybe. You know what? It's a good thing that God can keep all that stuff together, keep track of it, and that He has never made a mistake. We are guaranteed what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and home with the Lord, so we make it our own goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while here in, in the body, whether good or bad. And since then we know what is to fear the Lord, what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade others what we are is plain to God. And I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We're not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If, if we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us. Because we are convinced that one died for all. And therefore, all died. Adam died. And so the whole human race eventually dies. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do, do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. A new creation has come. The old is gone. You know, so many times we want to hold on to the old self. Hey, get rid of that. Throw it away. You are a new creation in Christ. So live as a new creation. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God 
who reconciles us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We as Christians have the, the responsibility to not only be reconciled to God, but we should be reconciling relationships. Not saying, you know what, that guy's good for nothing. Get rid of him. He's, he's no good. No, we need to start bringing people together because God is a God of unity. What does the world do? Try to divide. Yeah, that's why politics is so nasty right now, because people are trying to divide the nation. We need to come together, work together for the good. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. Aren't you glad that God doesn't count your sins when you are in Christ? And he has committed us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And then we go to Romans. And I've read this a lot. Shall we... What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that... Grace may increase. The more sin we get, the more grace God's going to give us. I know. By no means. No way. God forbid. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live it any, any longer? Or do you not know that all of us who, have, who were baptized into Christ Jesus were what? Baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism in order, into death in order that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. We too might live a what kind of life? A new life. A different life from the old. And then when the apostles were preaching, right? In Acts 5, they, they arrested the apostles and they put them in jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the door of the jail and brought them out. And he says, go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people about this new life. Whose responsibility is it to proclaim the message of newness, a new life? God has given us that responsibility, each and every one of us. So maybe the number 11 on that list, or maybe it should be on top of New Year's resolution. I resolve to bring at least one person. In 2017, one person, I resolved to commit myself wholeheartedly to bring someone to a knowledge and relationship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shouldn't be too hard, but that's all I ask. And you know what you'll find out when you are instrumental to bringing someone to the Lord? You won't be able to stop. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your life that you lived here on this earth to give us hope and to free us from bondage so that we can have the life that you created us to have. An, an abundant life. And Lord, it is the best life possible. And Lord, help us not to be selfish of what you've given to us, but to share it. To proclaim it. To shout it out from the mountaintops that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's all stand.